And I'm going to talk about a very fundamental change that is going on in the very fabric of the modern economy. And to talk about that, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Because in the beginning were commodities. Commodities are things that you grow in the ground, raise in the ground, or pull out of the ground. Basically, animal, mineral, vegetable. And then you extract them out of the ground and sell them on the open marketplace. Commodities were the basis of the agrarian economy that lasted for millennia. But then along came the Industrial Revolution. And then goods became the predominant economic offering, where we use commodities as the raw material to be able to make or manufacture goods. So we moved from an agrarian economy to an industrial economy. But what then happened over the last 50 or 60 years is that goods have become commoditized. Commoditized where they're treated like a commodity, where people don't care who makes them. They just care about three things and three things only. Price, price, and price. Now there's an antidote to commoditization, and that is customization. My first book was called Mass Customization, and it came up a couple of times yesterday. And how I discovered this progression of economic value was realizing that customizing a good automatically turn it into a service because it was done just for a particular person because it wasn't inventoried it was delivered on demand to that individual person so we moved from an industrial economy to a service-based economy but over the past 10 or 20 years what's happened is that services are being commoditized as well long-distance telephone service sold on price 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 fast food restaurants with all their value pricing and even the internet is commoditizing not just goods but services as well what that means is that it's time to move to a new level of economic value. Time to go beyond the goods and the services. And using the same heuristic, what happens when you customize a service? What happens when you design a service that is so appropriate for a particular person? That's exactly what they need at this moment in time. Then you can't help but make them go wow. You can't help but turn it into a memorable event. You can't help but turn it into an experience. So we're shifting to an experience economy where experiences are becoming the predominant economic offering. Now, most places that I talk to, when I talk about experience, I talk about Disney, right, the world's premier experience stager. I talk about theme restaurants and experiential retail and boutique hotels in Las Vegas, the experience capital of the world. But here, when you think about experiences, think about Thomas Dolby and his group playing music. Think about meaningful places. Think about drinking wine, about a journey to the clock of the long now. Those are all experiences. Think about TED itself, the experience capital in the world of conferences. All of these are experiences. When it comes to being what you say you are, the easiest mistake the companies make is that they advertise things that they are not. Right? That's when you're perceived as fake, as a phony company, advertising things that you're not. Think about any hotel, any airline, any um, hospital. Right, if you could check into the ads, you'd have a great experience. <laughs> but unfortunately, you have to experience the actual hotel, airline, and hospital, and then you have that disconnect. Then you have that perception that you are phony. So the, the number one thing to do when it comes to being what you say you are is to provide places for people to experience who you are. For people to experience who you are. Right? It's not advertising, does it? That's why you have companies like Starbucks Right? that doesn't advertise at all. They said, you want to know who we are, you have to come experience us. And think about the economic value they have provided by that experience. Right? Coffee at its core is what? Right? It's beans. Right? It's coffee beans. You know how much coffee is worth when treated as a commodity as a bean? Two or three cents per cup. That's what coffee is worth. But grind it, roast it, package it, put it on a grocery store shelf, and now it'll cost 5, 10, 15 cents when you treat it as a good. Take that same good and perform the service of actually brewing it for a customer in a corner diner, in a bodega, a kiosk somewhere, you get, five, you get 50 cents, maybe a buck per cup of coffee. But surround the brewing of that coffee with the ambiance of a Starbucks, with the authentic theater that goes inside of there. And now, because of that authentic experience, you can charge two, three, four, five dollars for a cup of coffee.